As you can see this is a power station. We're going to look at the energy transfers in the power station. As you can see, here we've got some fuel, which some gas, um, which has chemical energy stores inside it. This is burnt, so the chemical energy is transferred to thermal energy, which heats the water moving through this pipe. The water is boiled and turned to steam, or water vapour, which turns a turbine. So thermal energy is converted into kinetic energy to turn the turbine. The move, the turning of the turbine, spins the generator, which causes, which turns kinetic energy into electrical energy. This electrical energy is then power, so fed into the national grid, which we'll see later. As you can see, this is a flow diagram of the energy transfers. You've got your chemical energy in the coal or the fuel. This could be nuclear um, energy or it could be um, like natural gas, some, which has chemical energy store. It's burnt, it's transferred into thermal energy or heat. It boils the steam, boils water into steam, which causes the turbine to turn, so it's turned into kinetic energy. It turns the generator, which causes electrical energy. So you've got your energy transfers there. This is how the power station links up with the national grid. As we saw in the first slide, the generator creates the electrical energy. This is fed into the, the national grid which supplies the home with electricity. To reduce the uh, energy losses, to increase the efficiency of the transfer of electricity from the power station to the home, we have a step-up transformer which creates a much higher voltage. One of the things that you'll have to do is to find out how this high voltage reduces energy losses as the energy, electrical energy is transported to the home. Within the power station itself, we saw that heat energy was created. Now, although that's slightly useful, a lot of heat escapes from the power station. A lot of the heat that's created to boil the water does actually escape and is not used to boil the water but escapes out of the power station. So you also need to find out how that energy can be reduced in a power station. What can they do in the power station to reduce the heat loss? This is a, a car. The energy, the chemical energy, is used to create uh, kinetic energy which moves the car forwards. As you can see the yellow arrow is the arrow that we want. We want the car to move forward. That is the useful energy. Kinetic energy moving the car forward. So this is a Sankey diagram. This is a useful way of showing energy. Uh, the useful energy being the one that comes out across the top and the wasted energy that comes across out at the bottom. In an ideal world, you'd have 100 going in and 100 kinetic energy coming out. But unfortunately, there, there are energy losses. So energy lo is lost as heat. Energy is lost as sound. I'm sure you're aware that a lot of cars are very noisy, so that is energy that's been lost as sound. But the biggest way that energy is lost is through wasted heat. You need to find out how heat or sound, or, or maybe two ways that heat loss can be reduced in a car. You might want to think along the lines of Formula One, something like KERS, um, or other ways that, that heat energy could be used, uh, so maybe frictional energy that that creates heat when they put on the brakes. How could that be used in a much more efficient way? So you need to find out how heat energy or sound energy, or both, or two for heat energy, how two ways in which energy losses are reduced in a car.